Good evening. Welcome to the February 28th Board of Adjustment meeting. I call the meeting to order now. <laughs> um, the first order of business is approval of the Ju January 24th, 2023 meeting minutes. Are there any edits or comments? Right. Yes, Madam Chair, I have two minor uh, edits. On page nine, uh, second paragraph, second sentence, at the end of the sentence, at the end of the f second line, it says, he said he knew how it was, uh, or so know how it was, it should be new, it should be K-N-E-W. Okay. And let's see, there's one other one that I have to scroll back to find. I'm, I don't, uh, actually, that might not have been page, that is page nine. Hold on, hold on. One this is why it would be easier to send them in advance. On page four, the third paragraph, which begins with Mr. Matten, Matson uh, clarified, the second line towards the end of that uh, line, it says their intention was to, and then the was to is repeated on the third line. So just Does anybody else have anything to add? I also noticed a small typo on nine. It says, she said agreed with Mr. Matson, and it should be she said she agreed with Mr. Matson. So is there anyone who would like to move approval of the minutes with those amendments? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there anything else to discuss? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So um, there are only five voting members tonight and pursuant to section seven, item seven of the Board of Adjustment Rules and Regulation, each applicant has the right to postpone consideration to the next meeting <coughs> when there are six or more members present. Should there be any applicants tonight that wish to postpone to a later date, please state your request to the board when your item is read into the record, okay? Also, just a reminder that each petitioner has 15 minutes to talk to us. And if you think you're going to need more, please ask ahead of time and the board will decide if, if that is given. And each person who comes up to speak to, for, or against has five minutes. Okay. The first item of business, item E in new business, is a request to postpone due to improper notice. The request of the Griffin Family Corporation owners and Lovewell Veterinary Services LLC applicant for property located at 800 Islington Street, Unit 1B, whereas relief is needed to allow a veterinary clinic which requires the following. One special exception from section 10.440, use number 7.50, to allow a veterinary clinic where the use is permitted by special exception. Said property is located on assessor map 154, lot one, and lies within the character district 4-W, CD4W district, LU-23-8. Request to postpone due to improper notice. Madam Chairman, uh, I'd like to make the motion to postpone this request. Okay, is there a second? Second. We'll give it to Mr. McDonald. Okay. Is there any discussion? Would you like to say anything to support? No. Okay, so, Mr. Mantle, how do yes. you vote? Mr. McDonald. Yes. Yes, Mr. Rossi. Yes. Mr. Matson. Yes. And the chair votes aye. So item E under new business is postponed till next month. Yes, next month. The next item of business is the request of Kate Street Development LLC owner and rare breed veterinary partners applicant for property located at 350 U.S. Route 1 Bypass, whereas relief is needed to allow an urgent care veterinary clinic, which requires the following. One, special exception from section 10.440, use number 7.50 to allow a veterinary clinic where the use is permitted by special exception. Said property is located on assessor map 172, lot two, and lies within the gateway corridor, G1, and transportation corridor, TC district, 
LU-23-9. Is there anyone to speak to this petition? Good evening. Hello. Uh, my name is Nick Collins. I am from Olson Lewis Architects and I represent Rare Breed Veterinary Partners. I'm seeking a special permit application for uh, to run a <coughs> urgent care veterinary clinic. Um, just an introduction, um, the, um, the location is 350 U.S. Route 1 bypass. Um, it will be about 4,000 square feet of uh, tenant space in an existing building. And um, the um, veterinary urgent care is a little similar to, or very much similar to human urgent care in that it, uh, it seeks to treat illness or injuries that aren't necessarily life-threatening but do require medical attention um, that can't wait for a, um, your regular general practitioner veterinarian. Um, it will be a walk-in clinic providing outpatient care. Um, it will operate after hours and on weekends and during holidays for uh, pets in a comfortable setting. Um, the majority of the patients will be dogs, cats, and other small animals. There will be no um, larger horses or farm animals or anything like that. And uh, there will be no crematory on site or um, no commercial boarding of any um, kennels or anything like that. Um, so the typical areas available to the public or client side of the facility would be an entry vestibule, a lobby reception area, a few exam rooms, about six exam rooms, and then a, a public restroom. And then the remainder of the facility will be accessible by staff only. And that'll include a, a treatment area, a pharmacy lab, a surgery and pack area, an x-ray room, an animal holding area for post-surgery recovery, a vet office, break room, staff restroom, and then a utility room. The uh, proposed hours for the facility would be Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. until 11 p.m., and then Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So the um, special exception that we are seeking uh, for this location falls under section 10.232.20 and um, we meet or we believe we meet the following standards. Um, standards provided by this ordinance for the particular use permitted by special exception. Um, so the veterinary urgent care will meet all of the standards provided by the city of Portsmouth zoning ordinance. Pursuant to section 10.440, uh, veterinary care facilities are permitted by special exception within our zoning district, G1. Um, additional standards specifically applying to this use listed in the zoning ordinance are section 10.832, requiring that all kennels be located within an enclosed building, and section 10.592, which requires a 200-foot minimum distance between any lot with a veterinary hospital with kennels. Um, according to 10, section 10.1530, the definition of kennel is an establishment with the primary use is ho housing dogs, cats, or other household pets, and or grooming, breeding, training, or selling of animals. And as defined by this um, ordinance, the proposed clinic does not have any kennels. We are not uh, seeking to house anything, um, so we, we meet that requirement. Section 10.232.22. No hazard to the public or adjacent property on account of potential fire, explosion, or release of toxic material. Um, so the proposed veterinary urgent care clinic will meet all applicable building codes and will be operated in accordance with all health and safety regulations, particular to veterinary facilities. Some specific area of uh, consideration within this um, use would be a medical gas system, oxygen, uh, waste gas, or suction. Um, all of this will be designed in conformance with local and state fire codes and uh, to minimize any potential hazards from fire or explosion. Um, the x-ray room, all required x-ray safety procedures, shielding, controls, maintenance, and calibration will conform with the state of New Hampshire rules and control of radiation. And then medication control in the uh, pharmacy and PAC uh, areas. Medication will be stored in the pharmacy area and controlled by a locked distribution system with access only granted to um, authorized staff members. In section 10.232.23, no detriment to property values in the vicinity or change of the essential characteristics of any area, including 
residential neighborhoods or businesses and industrial districts on account of the location or scale of buildings and other structures, parking areas, access way, odor, smoke, gas, dust, or any pollutant, noise, glare, heat, vibration, or unsightly odors, storage of equipment, vehicles, or other materials. Um, so we are not looking to change the essential characters of anything um, within the existing facility. We are um, interior only. Um, there, uh, especially with animal care facilities, um, isolation of noise is important not only for our adjacent neighbors, <coughs> but also for the health and well-being of the animals within the facility itself. So um, particular interest is paid to uh, soundproofing and uh, minimizing as much noise. Um, additionally, um, having a proper HVAC system in order to reduce any odors is a particular concern and will be incorporated into the design. Um, section 10.232.24. No creation of a uh, traffic safety hazard or a substantial increase in the level of traffic congestion of, in the vicinity. Um, the proposed use will not adversely in, impact traffic patterns or the commercial oriented character of the area in general. Um, the facility anticipates that loading and delivery operations will occur approximately once or twice per week, depending on need. Um, any biohazard or animal waste will be removed by a dedicated service and properly disposed of off-site. Any animal cadavers will be temporarily stored on-site and then in a chest freezer and then removed as needed by a dedicated crematory service. Um, and then uh, pursuant to section 10.1112.32, um, the existing retail trade use of the property requires that a total of 13 off-street parking spaces or one per 300 square feet um, the ordinance also requires a total of eight off-street parking spaces for a veterinary care facility and would re uh, result in a decreased number of parking spaces. Um, Rare Breed anticipates that a regular staff of seven to ten would be using this facility with the ability to serve three to five patients. The existing off-street parking of 214 shared commercial parking spaces located more than meets this um, intended use and complies with this uh, requirement. In section 10.232.25, no excessive demand on municipal services, including but not limited to water, sewer, waste disposal, police, and fire protection and schools. Um, Rare Breed does not anticipate any excessive demand on municipal services with this proposed use. Um, the existing building is serviced by public water and sewer that meets our um, requirements of a veterinary facility and uh, we anticipate little if any demand on police or fire protection um, and would cause no impact to schools. Section 10.232.26, no significant increase of stormwater runoff into adjacent properties or streets. Um, as the proposed use will be an interior tenant build out um, and does not change anything on the site, we in anticipate no increase on the stormwater uh, runoff. So in conclusion, um, we feel that we meet all of the criteria for special exception. And um, I believe included with the um, application were a few, oh, the floor plan right there. Um, as you can see in blue, everything is um, client facing, um, public front of the house. And then everything um, in pink is back of the house, staff only. So you have six exam rooms, a lobby, a reception area, and a uh, public toilet on the public side. And then um, vet office, lab, pharmacy, treatment area, right up, uh, supplies, surgery, pet, pack, x-ray, and the uh, break room, and some holding areas for uh, recovery post-surgery. And then I believe there might also be a couple plans showing the, yep, there it is. That's the location on the site uh, with the existing parking or planned parking. And then there should be some photos of the existing building. And I believe that there's some um, anticipated uh, renovations for the site to bring it up to uh, the previous uh, site plan shown with the parking levels there. And then lastly is a, um, I believe a GIS map showing, there it is, here. The, um, the property location. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? 
I, I have one question. Uh, is the parking is owned by the same parcel, or is it also shared with the other parcels with different ownership? I believe it's owned by the same parcel. Um, everything that's shown on the um, the site plan a few slides back. Maybe forward one. There it is. Okay. Yeah, it's all the same parcel. Yeah. Everything um, in that light blue is the uh, shared commercial parking that we would essentially have access to. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone to speak to, for, or against this petition? Seeing no one rise, I will close the public hearing. Board, what would you like to do? I think that the <clears throat> application meets the criteria for special exception, and I will be supporting this, this application. Is that a motion, Mr. Rossi? If no one else has, speaks to the contrary, <laughs> it will be. Let's do that. Okay. Thank you. I move that we approve the application for special exception uh, as presented and advertised. Is there a second? Thank second. you, Mr. Mantle. Would you like to speak to your motion? Yes. Uh, this uh, use is permitted by special exception uh, within the ordinance and it complies with all uh, the design and the intended use complies with all the particular requirements for a veterinary facility. Uh, so uh, it does meet the first standard. Uh, the second, with regard to no hazard to public or adjacent property on account of potential fire explosion or release of toxic materials, uh, the applicant has taken care to ensure the proper handling of, uh, of gases uh, such as oxygen that could present such a hazard uh, and will be doing that in compliance with all applicable uh, regulations and, and uh, guidelines and standards uh, so it does not present a hazard to the public or adjacent property. There's no, no detriment to property values in the vicinity or change in the essential characteristics. Uh, this is located in an area that has a lot of commercial uses. Uh, it is right, uh, easy access from the road, which speaks to point four, uh, no creation of traffic safety hazards. Uh, that's a very heavily traveled road. Uh, it would be very surprising if the traffic uh, ingress and egress from a veterinary facility would add in any substantial way to the traffic uh, conditions in that particular vicinity. No excessive demand on municipal services. The applicant states that the existing supply of water and waste dis and uh, waste uh, water dispo uh, extraction uh, are adequate for his uh, purposes. Uh, he's not creating any new police or fire protection uh, hazards, uh, not near enough to a school uh, to be of any concern. And uh, the property already has a great deal of impervious uh, surface. Uh, this will not be adding to the impervious surface of the property, so there's no increase in the stormwater uh, runoff into adjacent property or streets. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anything to add? Um, I agree. They meet all six criteria easily. It's the old Suzuki dealership. I can't see where this could be any more detrimental than that. Uh, not that it was detrimental in the first place. <laughs> um, yeah, it's commercial use um, in a commercial area. I will support the motion. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion before we vote? Okay. In that case, a yes vote is to approve of the veterinary clinic. Mr. Bannell? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Madsen? <clears throat> yes. And the chair votes yes. You are approved. The next item of business is the request of Andrea Hurwitz Shrebnik, owner for property located at 129 Aldridge Road. Oh, I am so sorry we skipped one. I had it covered by my machine. Yeah, no, it's right here. Yeah, Sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's um it's ADA. Yeah, we're both wrong. 
Sorry. The request of Aviation Avenue Group LLC applicant and Pease Development Authority owners for property located at 80 Rochester Avenue, whereas relief is needed for the construction of an advanced manufacturing facility, which requires the following. One, variance from Article 304.03E to allow a 28-foot rear yard where 50 feet is required. Said property is located on Assessor Map 308, Lot 1, and lies within the Pease Industrial District, LU-22-210. Is there anyone to speak to this? Sorry. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. The applicant wishes to postpone this evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we don't need to approve. No. We have to vote on that. Okay. 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 Make a motion to postpone. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So moving right along to the next one. The request of Andrea Hurwitz, Zrebnik, and forgive me if I have really ruined that, owner for property located at 129 Aldridge Road, whereas relief is needed for the installation of a mechanical unit, which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.515.14 to allow a four-foot side yard where 10 feet is required. Said property is located on assessor map 153 Lot 35 and lies within the single residence B district, LU-23-10. Is there anyone to speak to this? We have Chris Redmond on Zoom. Oh, okay. Okay, whenever you are ready. Good, good evening, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, and thank you for for allowing me to zoom in this evening. Um, we, I am here representing uh, my clients at 129 Aldrich Road, and we're here tonight to request uh, that a condenser uh, currently located on the left side of the home and within the 10 foot side setback be replaced with a new slightly smaller condenser in the same location. There's currently a renovation project uh, going on at the property and the current condenser needs to be replaced to accommodate the new HVAC system. When we originally submitted this application to request to keep the new condenser in the same location as the existing one, um, we reached out to some of the neighbors and per request of the neighbor to the left side of the Shrebnex, the closest to the condenser, she requested that they move the condenser about 10 feet back. And if you look on the plan that we um, submitted with the application, you'll see that the existing condenser is on a, a thank you for bringing that up so it's on the next uh i think the next slide down um there should be one more that shows a floor plan there it is right there thank you so it's it's um the existing one is at a little jog in the existing part of the residence the part of the house to the right of that is a new new addition and the neighbor to the left has asked my clients if they would think about moving this condenser further back towards the rear of the property or to the right on your screen almost just how it is now but to the very uh, back part of the home and it would be uh, just a little bit further away from their kitchen window and behind some bushes that are on that side of the property and and the neighbor was was hoping that would dampen um, some of the noise and so i know that we submitted the application with the um, asking to keep it where it is now 
but um, based on that feedback from the neighbor, my clients are okay with, uh, and, and of course we checked with the electrician and the HVAC contractor, and they're okay with moving it um, to the very rear of the home on the back corner. Um, I'm not sure if I can share a PDF, but if I can, I could show you exactly where that is, but I um, think it might be self-explanatory. Oh, here we go. Would you like me to try to? Yes, please. Share that real quickly. I am told it will work. <laughs> okay, great. Yes. Um, I just tried. I hope everyone can see that. And I show the location uh, just a little bit further back, um, away from the street, and a little bit just more protected from the uh, the neighbor to their left. So I am hoping to uh, slightly revise this request to show just just based on the neighbor's feedback that we would uh, be okay with moving it to this new location. And um, I can, uh, if it pleases the board, I will go to the uh, five points that we have here. <coughs> um, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Um, point one, we believe that replacing the existing condenser with a new smaller and hopefully quieter one will not um, be contrary to the public interest. The spirit of the ordinance will be observed. Um, we believe that it will be ob observed as the new condenser will not negatively impact the neighbors to the left of the property. Um, substantial justice will be done in our opinion. It will be because we are replacing an older, noisier condenser with a slightly smaller and quieter one. The values of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. Um, we believe that they will not, as many homes in the area have these nowadays. And, um, you know, again, switching to a smaller one and a newer one, we hope will, will, will be an improvement. And lastly, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance will result in an unnecessary hardship um, aside from these two locations on that side of the house, we do not know where else we could move it. Um, the driveway is on the other side of the house. It's a pretty tight property, as you may know, on Aldrich Road. So we uh, feel like we just we need to put it somewhere. and We're trying trying to put it in the least harmful place possible. Um, that is it. OK, thank you. Are there any questions for the petitioner? Yeah, I, I do have two questions. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> One is if you could just clarify for me, the uh, the proposal shows that the existing uh, unit is 5.7 feet away and the proposed is four feet away from the left side, left side lot line. But in the diagram you just showed us, it looked like the new location is actually farther from the left side lot line. So what, what am I confused about here? Um, so the PDF that I shared with you, um, it is moving the condenser further away from the property line, which is to the, the, the north of that screen. However, it's still within the side setback. So either way, the house, that 10 foot side setback goes right up to the wall mm -hmm. of the residence. So there's no way to move it out of that 10 foot no, um, no I, I, I get that, but what is the specific relief that's being asked for in the new, the revised plan? It's, it's oh, not, it's in not the revised feet. plan, it would be just as, just as it is in the existing plan that it would be relief from that side setback. We're moving it 12 inches further away than it was in the application. So, so and I really, apologize, uh, that dimension I do not have, but I think you, you may have just mentioned it, that it was five foot um, seven inches, but, uh, and well, the I... new location is six foot seven inches. It would, it okay. Would from four to five feet. Yeah. Five feet is, is the new. Yeah. 
That's the new request. Okay. And the other, uh, I, when I looked at the property, I couldn't see what was going on at the very back of the property. What is, uh, what's preventing locating the unit in the, absolutely in the rear of the property? Um, so on the current plan that I am sharing, if you can still see that, um, there is a deck off the rear. You'll see something that I labeled bulkhead and to the, um, south of that on the page is a deck coming off of the new new uh, part of the home so there is the uh, we we can't locate it near near the bulkhead of course we wouldn't you know, be able to access it and there's a deck off of the remaining part of the back of the home so we, where we have it now that new location is just around the corner from the very back wall of the Resonance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, then thank you. I will open it to the public. <laughs> Is there anyone here to speak to this petition? Is there anyone here to speak against this petition? Is there anyone? here to speak to, for, or against this petition. Seeing nobody rise, I will close the public hearing. And um, is there a motion from somebody? Oh, I did the last one. <laughs> Anybody else, Mr. Matson? I'll make a motion to approve. OK, thank you. Is there a second? Is there a second? You, you can do it. Yes? Yes. OK, thank you. <laughs> Um, please okay. go ahead. Uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, this is just replacing an existing condenser with a newer, quieter condenser uh, with uh, less relief needed because it'll be further from the property line. Um, and it's in the side yard, not easily visible from the street. Uh, granting the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance. Um, for, for the same reasons just stated, and there's no uh, um, impairment to uh, public health, safety, or welfare, and uh, it does not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Uh, this is a needed improvement for uh, updating the home and energy efficiency, and there, uh, there's no viable alternative uh, location and there's no detriment to the to the public. Uh, granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. Uh, there's no reason why uh, improving this uh, a, a new condenser, replacing the old one, would would harm property values. Um, little literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. The property has special conditions that distinguish it from other properties in the area. And owing to these special conditions, a fair and substantial relationship does not exist between the general public uh, purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable one. It, it, the proposed use is a reasonable one and this lot is half the width of the required minimum uh, lot for single family residents and the overall lot, uh, lot size is also undersized. Uh, and given the location of the home and the driveway, uh, this imposes a hardship that would justify this uh, location. Okay. I'm going to ask you to please include some words about the new location and the modification that was made this evening so yes. that we know we're talking about the uh, new location. Yes, the, the uh, advertised uh, request for relief was for uh, a four foot setback. Uh, and uh, the revised application uh, involves uh, asking for less relief uh, because it'll be five feet uh, set back from the property line, which is, is further. Okay. Did you it's, want to? Is yeah. that a stipulation? Uh, I would add that as a stipulation, um, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Does the second have anything to add? Uh, I concur with Mr. Madsen's discussion completely, and uh, I will support the the uh, motion. Okay. Mr. Mano? Looking back at the prior application and looking at the drawings today, 
uh, the existing condenser um, was four feet away. Mm -hmm. So when they came for their variance for the building, the condenser was the closest thing to the side yard. I suppose it was. I wasn't here. I don't remember this. I don't remember this here. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the plans yeah. here, I mean, I think they swapped out the size of the condensers between the two plans. That's why the older one looks smaller and the newer one looks bigger when it's actually the opposite. My point is when they applied for the variance before for the building, condenser was already there four feet from the line with that's prop this no variance. So well, no, I'm here. We I'm are. not opposed to it. Okay. I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, you're right because it's not new. Okay. But, is there any further discussion? I'm sorry. No, I'm good. Cut you off. I'm good. Okay. So then a yes vote means we approve the condenser in the new location that we learned of this evening, the amended location. Mr. Mantle. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Mr. Matson. Yes. And the chair votes yes. <clears throat> so you have a new condenser in a new location. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item of business is the request of the RTM Trust and Ryan T. Mullen and Heidi E.K. Trustees Owners for property located at 253 Odeon Point Road, whereas relief is needed for the installation of a mechanical unit which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.515.14 to allow the mechanical unit to be located closer to a street than the principal structure. Said property is located on Assessor Map 224, Lot 10-19, and lies within the single <coughs> residence A SRA district. Is there anyone to speak to this petition? Yes, there is. Yes, please come up. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board and Ms. Casella as well. Uh, my name is Ryan Mullen. I am uh, one of two property owners um, and I'm also a new resident of the city of Portsmouth. Uh, we purchased our house here at uh, 253 Odeon Point Road back in November and we are um, involved in a major renovation project and um, my presence before the board this evening uh, relates to one part of that project, uh, and that's for a generator we're requesting to install. Um, you'll have to pardon me, I'm, I'm getting older in age, and so I have to switch my glasses from time to time. So uh, I apologize. Don't apologize. Yes. Don't apologize, please. <laughs> I will uh, do my best to stay within the 15 minute parameters. Um, and I. Uh, Produced this uh, request myself, so I'm I'm uh, definitely aware of, of everything in here, and I'd be more than happy to, to take questions uh, following okay. um, the conversation here. So uh, that said, uh, the residential uh, property and single-family structure located at 253 Odeon Point Road in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, was constructed in the year 2000, and most recently purchased in November of 2022. Like I said. Um, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, mechanical systems of the structure were original and were at the end of their useful life. The HVAC mechanical system is being replaced with a 20-seer Bosch heat pump system, which is powered by electricity only. A Wiesman water heater slash boiler powered by liquefied petroleum gas will, be, will provide backup heat to the HVAC mechanical system at extremely low temperatures when the Bosch heat pumps are not considered to be efficient. It's estimated the Bosch heat pump mechanical system will provide HVAC to the structure 95% of the time, but the Bosch heat pump mechanical system is powered by electricity only. Therefore, a power outage would render the Bosch heat pump HVAC mechanical systems unusable. Consequently, myself, the property owner, 
um, and my spouse. Um, <sighs> Request approval from the city of Portsmouth to permanently install a 26 kilowatt Generac residential backup LPG fuel generator to provide backup electric power directly to the structure's electrical system during an electricity power outage. The 26 kilowatt Generac generator is 40 inches long by 25 inches wide by 29 inches high, and I believe I provided the city with some specs on that generator. <clears throat> It's rated for 67 decibels at 23 feet. And I'm by no means um, an expert um, at equations, and I'm not a mathematician. Um, but a little uh, research I conducted according to the inverse square law suggests it can be shown that for each doubling of distance from a point source, the sound pressure level decreases by approximately six decibels. Uh, the closest residential structure to the proposed location of the generator is 119 Gosport Road. <clears throat> at 110 feet. That said, if my neighbor, John O'Reilly, who I've spoken to, uh, were standing at the edge of his house um, at 119 Gosport, he'd be subjected to an approximate uh, decibel level of 28, which per the Academy, American Academy of Audiology would sound soft like a whisper to faint like leaves rustling. Okay. So I've actually had, um, I don't live at the property right now because there's some significant renovations taking place, but I've had the chance um, to meet uh, several of my neighbors. Um, and mostly it's, I apologize for all the renovations and the trucks. Um, hopefully it'll be over soon. We didn't understand it was gonna be a big of a process um, and renovation as it is. Um, and so, you know, we, we talk in person when I can, when I'm over there managing contractors um, or on the weekends when I'm over there working myself. So um, I, I have had a chance to talk with John O'Reilly uh, just next door um, and he told me, quote unquote, good idea and fine with us. Because obviously I wanted to check with my neighbors to see if they had any concerns like, you know, the previous applicants um, had. Um, I've also talked with uh, Kelly Orr. She's the property owner directly across the street at 260 Odeon Point Road. And she told me uh, today, quote, unquote, that's absolutely fine with us. <laughs> um, I've also had the opportunity to speak with Mark McVeigh, who's the property owner down at 330 Odeon Point Road. Uh, a couple times. We had some nice conversations. He's um, a part-time resident up here, lives down in Boston. But uh, we were talking about it because I suggested that he may have gotten a letter in the mails and a butter. Um, and he told me, well, any generator that I would have plugged in would be a lot louder than that. So I appreciate you running it by me. So um, that said, I'll get into a little bit more um, of my proposal here. Um, and I'll tell you what, um, Portsmouth is unique and this property is no different. Um, it has two very unique features which I've learned about. Uh, the first unique feature is that nearly the entire structure is located within the 100-foot wetlands buffer, which can prove challenging when maintaining, improving, and renovating uh, a structure to include its building envelope and mechanical systems while also protecting the structure from damage resulting from stormwater runoff, runoff and collection. Um, I included um, a map in Exhibit 1, as you can see here, um, from the, the city's map geo uh, system, which is pretty cool. Um, I'll have to say you can actually mark lines and measure distances, which is actually very helpful during uh, this type of process. Um, but as you can see, um, only really the, the northeast corner of the house um, roof line um, is not within that buffer. So um, it's uh, definitely interesting, and, and um, a lot of the work um, that I have planned um, you know, needs to take that into consideration. So um, that's one of... Um, one of the unique features here. Um, so I, um, I've heard a little bit about, um, some people ask questions about well, what about this location and what about that location? Um, and I've thought through, um, you know, locations of different things. I spent a lot of time over there at the house late at night, early in the morning. Um, and uh, like I said, there's, you know, there's primarily four walls to this house. Um, and this exhibit number two shows what's really the, the, the northwest side of the house here um, and, uh, and the, in the driveway, uh, in the garage, um, which is separated from the wetlands by a rock retaining wall. Um, there's a small area outlined in red here um, of grass adjacent to that structure in the driveway, but the entire portion of that small grass area is within the 100-foot wetlands buffer and placing a generator <coughs> that would require a wetlands conditional use permit. And furthermore, a significant portion of that small grass area uh, is located within 25 feet of the edge of the wetland and mechanical systems are not permitted in that area per zoning ordinance section 10.1016 uh, permitted uses subsection 6. 
Uh, additionally, the pedestrian door to the garage, as well as the windows positioned south of the garage doors along the west wall of the structure do not allow for the approximately 60 inches of clearance required when positioning a generator along the edge of the structure, which I learned from my electrician um, and some code rules. Um, to complicate matters, snow removal from the driveway into that small grass area would prove problematic to any mechanical item positioned anywhere in that small grass area. Um, and I included a photograph um, here, like I said. Um, there was an air conditioning condenser uh, located there. We've, we've since moved that to the other uh, side of the house um, for you know, some of the same reasons that I've, I've noted above. Um, so then we moved to the south side of the structure, which um, has proven to be uh, probably the most problematic part of the structure because of the stormwater runoff problems. But um, there is a patio and a garden area there. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's definitely prone to stormwater runoff and collection. I've included some photos there of some of the rains we've had recently and then the after effects of those. Um, <clears throat> the building envelope adjacent to the grade sustained significant water damage over the last 22 years, um, resulting from years of mismanaged stormwater runoff and collection. The placement of any mechanical system, including generator in that area, uh, south of the structure would not be feasible, primarily due to the risk of stormwater damage, which would also pose a safety risk relating to electrocution, but secondarily, because there are no, numerous doors and windows positioned along the entire south side of the structure, which would prevent a feasible and suitable location to permanently install a generator. Um, like I said, a couple photographs there for your reference. Um, we also had another AC condenser um, there along that side of the house, and we moved that for that very same reason, because of the water collection there. <clears throat> um, onto the east side, which is uh, where we're proposing uh, the generator uh, be installed. It's an ideal location. Uh, there are no doors on the east side of the structure, and the windows are positioned well above grade. There are no stormwater runoff or collection problems on the east side of the structure. The existing electrical meter is affixed to the east side of the structure. The existing radon pump and vent are affixed to the east side of the structure. The existing sewer tank is buried along the east side of the structure. The existing LPG tank is buried along the east side of the structure. The new boss P heat pumps are positioned along the east side of the structure as detailed and approved building permit. BLDG 22-1035 and approved mechanical permit PMGR 23-65. Furthermore, as you can see, there's uh, some very large shrubs there. <clears throat> um, and in the spring and summer seasons, um, it would make it nearly impossible to view any of the mechanical systems from any vantage point. Um, and I anticipate planting additional shrubs and fencing as necessary to obscure the proposed generator, which uh, I was told was gonna be happening by my spouse. So she likes to keep trees and things out of view and, and, and have things be nice. So <clears throat> consequently, the east side of the structure is an ideal location for the pros generator to be permanently installed. Specifically, it's proposed the generator be installed in the northern portion of the east side of the structure with recommended clearances from other mechanical systems and windows. The installation location of the generator will be approximately 60 feet from Odeon Point Road and 95 feet from Goss Point Port. Gosport Road. And then I showed on that um, diagram below, uh, number five, just some of the exact locations or approximate locations, I should say, with some of the other mechanical equipment and then um, those distances, which I got from that line measurement system on the city's map geo system, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, unfortunately, the second unique feature of the property and the structure is that it's considered a corner lot by the City of Portsmouth, therefore, for the zoning ordinance, <coughs> 10.515 measurement rules subsection 10.5151 for a corner lot or through lot, all requirements related to the front yard should apply to the principal front yard and all secondary front yards, which I learned um, shortly after the, the request was uh, put on hold. So I essentially have two front yards because my lot's a corner lot, which uh, uh, can be you know, complicated for matters like this. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, furthermore, the zoning ordinance measurement rules, subsection 10, 5154, states a power generator less than 36 inches above the ground level with a mounting pad not exceeding 10 square feet. So it'll be exempt from yard requirements, but set back at least 10 feet from a property line and shall not be located closer to the street than the front of the principal structure. So that's the kind of the problem I have. That's why I'm here tonight. So the north and east sides of the structure are considered to be the front of the principal structure and the backup electric generator cannot be installed closer to the street than the front of the principal structure on the east side of the property here. So um, <clears throat> I respectfully, based on that, uh, request this variance 
uh, from the terms of the zoning ordinance with regard to the section 10.515 measurement rules in yards. And I respectfully request that uh, we be allowed to permanently install a backup generator along the east side of the residence as referred to in Exhibit 5 where all the uh, external existing mechanical systems and utilities are located. Uh, based on the uh, above detailed information, the justifications um, provided below in the uh, document that I submitted, I believe um, the uh, below referenced five analysis criteria from section 10223 of the zoning warrants have been met. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about those in detail. Um, because it's my understanding those are important. So uh, the first one. Mr. Uh, Mullen, yes. just so you know, you have one minute left. Okay. <laughs> variance will not be contrary to the public interest. An approved variance to install the generator between the structure and the existing shrubs and trees would make it nearly impossible to view the generator from any vantage point during the spring and summer. Furthermore, I anticipate planting additional shrubs and fencing if necessary to obscure the generator from view in the fall and winter. Additionally, the generator is rated for 67 decibels. That's 23 feet, and the closest neighbor is 119 Gosport Road. We talked about that before. The spirit of the ordinance and approved variance to install the generator. The only feasible location on the east side of the property would satisfy a reasonable social and moral consensus. The property owner is not installing a generator. The little front yard of the property would be construed to disfigure the landscape in clear violation of the letter of the zoning ordinance. <clears throat> Substantial justice would be done and approved variance to install the generator would allow the property owner to enjoy full use of the structure and its mechanical system during a power outage thereby satisfying a standard of fairness and allowing a substantial justice to be done. <clears throat> the values of surrounding properties would not be diminished, and approved variance to install a generator will not diminish the values of the surrounding properties' values, because unlikely anyone not physically located on the property will see and or hear the generator and consequently pass negative judgment regarding the values of the surrounding properties. Last one, literal enforcement. If the provisions of the zoning ordinance were literally enforced, the property owner will be unable to install the generator and operate the generator during powder outages. Consequently, the property owner will be unable to efficiently cool and heat the structure, which will result in unnecessary physical and financial hardship. I complete. Almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are. Um, and I, I am definitely available to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. So, is there anyone here to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone here to speak to, for, or against this petition? Okay. In that case, I will close the public hearing. Uh, yes. Madam Chairman, uh, yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request as presented. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your motion? Um, sure. You did a very good job. Very good job. Um, the applicant has gone through a painstaking process to find another location for <laughs> this condenser uh, and presenting great reasons why it can't be located anyplace else. The best reason, it's in the uh, wetlands protection zone. And this property, like every property that's in a corner in Portsmouth, suffers from a hardship. In fact, and I understand the city's motivation for doing it, but if the address is already on Punk Road, that's the front of the house, regardless of what's on the side. Whether it's another road, another house, that's the front of the house. Um, so in any event, he, he's located this uh, proposed generator exactly where reason and logic says it should be along with all the other existing systems to the house. It's actually farther away from Gosport Road than it is from Audion Point Road. Um, so to the criteria, uh, .21, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. It would not. Um, the public would barely see it, and if the applicant holds true to the word, there'll be more shrubby around it, so the public won't even notice it's there. Um, granting the variance would observe the spirit of or the ordinance. Yes, it would. Uh, anybody who wants to make a 
change like this, which for the houses on Audio and Point Road, a generator is probably a very good idea. Uh, granting the variance would do substantial justice. Yes, it would, owing to the hardship. Um, that's 2324. Granting the variance would not diminish the values of the other properties. Um, I couldn't see how it would diminish the prop, you know, the other properties. If anything, it would increase them because this property is going to be worth more. And lastly, 10.233.25. Literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Yes, it would. Uh, like I said, um, in my estimation, your hardship is the fact that you have a corner lot. Um, you've already gone through the due diligence, which, which a lot of applicants would do, showing that the other locations that we might come up with are just bad ideas. <laughs> um, so for all those reasons, um, I made the motion, and we'll support the variance. Mr. Madsen, do you have anything to add? Yes. Um, yeah, the applicant makes a compelling case. Uh, and I think in addition to being a corner lot, which uh, if it weren't, uh, this applicant wouldn't even need a variance because it is actually on the side of the house. Uh, but there is also uh, the wetlands uh, that affect this property. And the actual the size of the property, uh, this uh, generator will be quite far from any neighbors in either of the streets. And noise will not be an issue. So I support this. Is there any discussion before we vote on this? I do have some experience with this generator, and uh, the noise is very minimal. I almost guarantee you'll find yourself going out there for the first few weeks to see if it's running through its test cycle, because you, you will not hear it, and neither will your neighbors. Better him than the neighbors, though. <laughs> yep. no, nobody's going to hear it. Good. Good. Okay. So a yes vote allows the generator. Mr. Mantle? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Mr. Matson? Yes. And the chair votes yes. You are approved. Okay. The next item of business is the request of the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire owner for a property located at 222 Court Street whereas relief is needed to install one 24 by 28 foot mural and one three by two foot sign, which requires the following. One, variance from section 10.1251.10 to allow aggregate sign area of 686 square feet where 36 feet is allowed. Two, variance from section 10.1251.20 to allow max area for individual sign of 678, where 16 square feet is allowed. And three, variance from section 10.1242, to allow more than one sign on building facing the street. And four, variance from section 10.1271, to allow a sign on the side of a building that is not facing a street. Said property is located on assessor map 116, lot 33, and lies within the character district 4-L1, an historic district, LU23-12M. Is there anyone to speak to this? Yes. Um, uh, my name is Barbara Ward. I live at 16 Nixon Park in Portsmouth, and I work at the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire as the senior grant writer and uh, coordinator of special projects. Um, at, located at 222 Court Street in Portsmouth. Um, we were, I, I wanted to explain a little bit of the background here. Um, the, uh, in the summer of 2021, we first became aware of the plans of the nonprofit organization, the Friends of Ruth Blay, to promote the installation of murals throughout the city to bring awareness of the lives of some of the prominent women of Portsmouth's storied history. And one of the women on the list uh, that they had, had, uh, had created for the History Through Art project um, was Ona Judge Staines. And this is a, a historical 
figure of tremendous importance for Portsmouth and to us at the Black Heritage Trail. And so we immediately responded to the friends of Ruth Blay that we were interested in, um, in being the site for a mural honoring Ona Judge Staines. Since those initial discussions, the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire has been focusing on further study of the 222 Court Street building, including a preservation assessment. And because of my background in historic preservation, I've been um, taking the lead on that for the organization. Architectural historian May Williams, architect Tracy Kozak, and preservation masonry specialist John Wastrom were enlisted as a team to conduct the preservation assessment, and at this time their work is nearly complete. Uh, actually, it has been submitted to the, um, the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, and we're just awaiting their response to the, the draft and, and then to come up with the final report. The conclusion is that the building was built sometime between 1797 and 1819 and that the West Brick facade was probably added to the building in response to fire damage during the 1813 fire. Uh, that fire actually originated directly across the street and luckily for our building it spread to the north and the east and the building was largely spared although May Williams did find evidence in the roof timbers of charring that indicates that there was at least some fire damage. We believe that the West Brick facade was, um, was actually added as a, uh, as a firewall, in essence, to the building. And it's not integral to the building in the way most um, brick walls would be. Um, our proposal shows the, the, it's of a type of brick that was meant to be painted originally. And I, you can't really see it too well in the photograph here, but it does show evidence of many layers of paint. And so being a preservationist, it's really important to me and also to the people on the team that that paint evidence be protected. So one of the things that we will be doing is actually uh, painting the over that in order to protect those layers of early paint. And we're working right now on the final uh, specifications for the type of the paint that pet type of paint that really needs to be used. And John Wastrom, for those of you who know him, you know he's painstaking in his desire to do absolutely only what is uh, period correct and is best for for the brick. And so we're working very closely with him on uh, what we could possibly, you know, the best possible way to um, to treat the building. And then the proposed mural would be put, uh, there'd be a protective layer between that paint that we put on and then the mural itself so that the mural could be removed or cleaned at a later date. Um, I don't know, many of you probably have questions about Ona Judge Staines. Ona Judge Staines is, was born enslaved. She was held in bondage by Martha Washington. She was Martha Washington's seamstress, and she was a skilled seamstress. She was the daughter of Martha Washington's personal enslaved servant, and she traveled with the Washington family to Philadelphia during George Washington's presidency. Returning home to Mount Vernon just often enough to subvert the Pennsylvania laws that allowed any enslaved person resident in the state for six months to obtain their freedom. And so the Washingtons would systematically send their enslaved people back to Mount Vernon just shy of six months and then have them stay in, in Virginia for a while and then come back to Philadelphia. While in Philadelphia, Ona became acquainted with many free black residents of the city of Philadelphia, and it was they, according to her later statement to um, the Granite State Freedman, a, um, an abolitionist newspaper that was printed in New Hampshire, uh, she explained that they helped her to escape to freedom. And then I included a quotation uh, on what exactly happened. Um, Ona was actually, she didn't tell anyone who the captain was who had given her safe passage to Portsmouth until after he died. His name was Captain John Bowles. And she had been here in Portsmouth for several months, we think, before she was uh, recognized by Elizabeth Langdon, the, uh, the governor's daughter, 
who had met her and had seen her because she was so closely associated to, to Martha Washington. The, the Washingtons tried several um, ways to entice Ona to go back to um, enslavement, and she steadfastly re refused. And it's inter there are interesting um, bits of information which make it quite clear that the residents of Portsmouth knew very well where she was when she went to Greenland and protected her for the rest of her life. And she lived free for the rest of her life. Um, her story is really one of immense courage. And it tells us of the strength of the free black community. It tells us of the soul of the Portsmouth community in the late 18th century as well, and early 19th century. And we feel that this is an important, as with the, the Ruth Blay, um, the Friends of Ruth Blay, their concept for these murals is to create a legacy for Portsmouth um, and have this be in association with the 400th um, anniversary. We are actually probably going to be the, the only um, applicant to uh, create a mural this year. Um, but as you know, the uh, Friends of Ruth Blay were granted a variance for their sign also on Court Street honoring uh, the life of Ruth Blay. Um, so the proposal, the proposed lo location of the mural is not on a wall with a street frontage. We have asked, however, for a sign on the street frontage that would provide historical background on the mural. We didn't want, because it is on our neighbor's driveway, we didn't want people to walk into, onto their driveway and stand there reading the sign. We have um, spoken, I've spoken personally with our neighbors, and um, John Veer and Beth Norton live in the condominium unit that would look directly at this. And I have not spoken to Beth, actually, but I did sp speak to John, and he was very excited about it. He thought it would be wonderful um, and really add to, he felt it would add to his property value, in fact, because it would be a significant work of art. They're a very artistic family. Um, and Mark Hubbard, who is, uh, lives in the other unit that would not directly face this, his unit, um, though I did have a picture in the PowerPoint which would sort of show the view that um, he might have from his yard at any rate or from the, um, from the uh, driveway. Uh, and we had a long conversation about it. He was very, you know, very positive about it. And we've assured both of them that we want to work closely with them as the, as the mural is, it goes up and the final, the final um, plans are made. Right now, as you see it, this is it's still a very, uh, uh, preliminary drawing where we are planning, we're going to we have a model in mind and we have a uh, plan to go and look at historic costume to make sure that we have the right thing with historic New England. Um, so <clears throat> we think it's an exciting project. I hope you think it's an exciting project. I sort of look at it as Court Street becoming an, an arts corridor because of the other public art on the street and um, it's, it's unusual in Portsmouth. And uh, personally, I would love to see Portsmouth have some wonderful public art. Um, I think that, I don't know if I need to go through all these criteria again, or if I even have time to do so, but I will. Just, um, just time, so yes, please. Okay. Um, we feel that the spirit of the ordinance is observed because it's an eclectic, mixed-use neighborhood surrounded by office, retail, municipal, and residential uses. We're two doors down from the fire department. There's a variety of signage, graphics, statues, and memorials in the immediate area. The fire station and the African burying ground memorials uh, are two examples. It enhances the character of the city by promoting its rich history, and its location is not on street frontage and does not create a hazard or a serious distraction. I hope it has the distraction of teaching people some history, but um, there's no obvious harm to the public. There would be a benefit to the public due to the educational components of the mural. There would be a benefit to the public because the mural will be a significant work of art designed and installed by a New Hampshire artist who has done other murals throughout the state. 
This is a, and the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. This is a mixed use neighborhood with an abundance of signage, colorful graphics, statues, memorials, etc. The addition of this mural into the neighborhood context would not alter or diminish the property values within the surrounding neighborhood. We've been in contact with the residents of the house next door, I, um, who I just mentioned specifically, the people that directly face the mural and they are positive about the mural project and the people who will be looking at it directly are really actually very excited about it and believe that will enhance the value of their property. Um, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. Um, this is because of the special conditions of the property to distinguish it from other properties in the area. There is no fair and substantial relationship between the general public purpose of the ordinance and the provision and the specific application of the prop provision to the property and the proposed use is a reasonable one. Alternately, unnecessary hardship means owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Property cannot be, be reasonably used in strict conformance with the ordinance. The building location between two residential bu buildings means that observers, passers-by, would only encounter the mural as they come within about 30 feet of the building. The purpose of the mural is to be viewed with, and to be comprehensible from the public way. Due to the west facade's proximity to the abutters driveway, all text describing the significance of the mural we propose to include on a small two by three foot sign to be placed on the front uh, or the north facade of the building adjacent to the current sign identifying the building as the headquarters of the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire. The small sign identifying the original date of the building we wish to remove because it's incorrect and so this would essentially be in similar location. Um, to where that would be, that has been. The rate of travel on Court Street is relatively slow. The mural will not create a hazard. In fact, I, it may help by slowing traffic a bit as people come around the corner. Um, this coming from those of us on the staff who try to back out of the driveway every day. We know that sometimes people come around rather quickly. The proposed mural will be a significant addition to the public art within the city of Portsmouth and will be harmonious with other examples of public art on Court Street, including the public sculpture at the fire station, the African Burying Ground Memorial Park, as well as the mural honoring Ruth Blay, and it will continue that history through art theme on, on Court Street. It will also become a significant part of the legacy and commemoration of Portsmouth's 400th. So, Thank do you have any you. questions? Yes, Mr. Mano. Mm -hmm. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Um, so the small sign, mm -hmm. the three by two sign, is the one that's going to the right hand side of the front door, correct? Uh, as you're walking out, is, as opposed to the left hand side. Actually, at it. yeah, it'll be it'll be to the left. That's the three point two sign. That's the one that will be the one that will describe. The white, the white square would be the one that has the information on the mural. And then that is the current location of our Black Heritage Trail sign, which we would move okay, over so to be next to the door. Okay, so the new sign is where the old sign was, and that will have the information for the mural. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's three by two. Yeah. And I do like the design of the mural, but that's preliminary. It's going to be filled in, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Actually, it leaves a lot to the imagination as it is right now. But there'll be no advertisement, anything on the mur mural. No, it'll all be on that. I'll be on the sign on the front. Okay. Uh, and the sign on the front will also have the logo of History Through Art yeah. on it so that you'll connect it. But we, rather than putting it on the side. Okay. But. As I said, the mural will have nothing as far as advertisement, owner's name, nothing. It will just be a mural. Yes. Fine. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, often the, uh, the hardship criterion is the most difficult one to put into words. But it starts off with the concept that the property is burdened by a restriction in a manner that's distinct from other similarly situated properties. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it about this property that makes it different uh, in a way that's relevant to this application compared to the surrounding properties? 
because I, I went and looked at it, and mm -hmm. you know, I drive by, by there a lot, of course, but um, couldn't quite put my finger on it. What would you say? Well, I would say that it is a it's a it's a building that is an office, but it is we are between because we're in a mixed use residential area. We are between in between residences, and that can that causes some issues relative to. Um, to the to the business, but um, you're right. This is a, a difficult one to put into to words because it's it, it because of the the um, because of the the size of the lot. Uh, we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of options mm -hmm. there. That's actually in favor of you know. I mean that that's the kind of thing that. It's actually kind of helpful. Um, okay, I, I need to think about that one a little bit. I, I have an idea, but I, I need to let it marinate. Any other questions? I do have a question. Mm -hmm. on, on, in figure three in here, which is a couple of screens back, it says the mural probably would be installed on the front lower quarter of the facade, lower right in this photo. And yet, when you go to the next one, it's clearly taking up the or the next picture, wherever it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's much taking it's, up the entire wall. So it's going to take that's, up the entire. That's wall. my mistake because, okay. as Stephanie knows, it was kind of a two-step process in in uh, okay in submitting the application. I, mean, I assumed it was the whole wall, but I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, like the whole wall looks great. Oh, that's yeah, that's. Yeah. Yes, Mr. McCain. And the whole wall is the 686 feet. I mean, that. Um, you can see in the next slide roughly how it, um, if you could keep going, it's roughly, it's, it's a little bit above the ground level and it stops right at the eaves. No, but I guess what I'm asking is the wording of the variance request accurate to the intention or was it based on the misstatement that it's uh, it's a misstatement based on um the two-step process of sending it in so it's 686 feet the right number is that yes. The right? yes yes because you right you corrected number. it right there was some yeah. yeah i had it first had a it's a long yeah okay, as long as this is correct <laughs> this is correct that's the important this is correct. thing yes mr mcdonald um th thank you for your presentation uh we have other examples of, of public art uh, similar in kind to this. Uh, the one that's jumping to mind right now is uh, the Wailing Wall, um, which which was painted um, while, years ago and was breathtaking when it was first finished uh, and suffered over its lifetime from exposure to the elements and the weather and all in New England. And so mm -hmm. my takeaway from that is you can't have one of these that becomes an orphan with nobody responsible for it. So I'd like to know who is going to maintain it, treat it, coat it, repair it, um, and where are the funding for that going to come from? The Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire. Okay, in both cases. We're ex extremely dedicated to um, to maintaining it, but understanding that in the in the far future, someone may want to remove it. We are also trying to protect the brick underneath, so that removal would not damage anything. And that that is, you know, if a hundred years from now, uh, that became an issue, uh, that that could be that could be taken care of. But the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire has no intention of moving. We're dedicated to this building and extremely emotionally dedicated to the story of Ona Judge and the importance of the story of Ona Judge. And so, absolutely. Thank you. Further discussion? Further questions? No. Okay, thank you. So, 
public here. Public, public, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there has been nobody. <laughs> I am so sorry. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this petition? Is there anyone here to speak to, for, or against this petition? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Thank you, guys. Yes, Mr. Mann. Um, not going to make a motion right now. Okay. Uh, to Mr. McDonald's point, the Wailing Wall, which was great. My daughter took part in painting it. Um, the deterioration of that wall lies with the city. Um, sorry. The, um, they call up the artist. He said, use this sealer. The city said that's too expensive. The city used a cheaper sealer. And then they called up the artist back to fix it. And he said, no. Oh, well. Um, my other point here is I have no problem with the front of the house, the signs, whatever. Since the mural, unlike the murals, say, at, I forget the name, um, the Italian restaurant that's on the corner. Toscana. Yeah. Which is an advertisement. Because of what's as, depicted as in the mural is it. in the store. And that was the argument there. Right. And I get that argument. Don't necessarily agree with it, but I get it. This is not an advertisement of anything. It's art. And when I skip through the zoning ordinance, because it says in the application, a mural is defined as a sign in the zoning ordinance. In the zoning ordinance, there's no mention of mural or painting or anything. It does say advertisement quite a bit. And since this has no advertisement I don't consider it a mirror I don't consider it a sign you know so if someone wanted to make a motion look for the hardship the hardships of the zoning ordinance <laughs> in my opinion that's all we did approve the Ruth Blay mural under the same circumstances and yeah I have a hard prime hard time with a mural that has no advertisement, no names, no lettering, it's just artwork on a wall to be called a sign and to fall under the sign zoning ordinance. We don't have a mural zoning ordinance. I don't know if we have an artwork zoning ordinance, but you know, if underneath it said, you know, this is on a judge and gave a big caption, so on and so forth, okay, you could construe that as an advertisement. And especially if it says, go down the street five, you know, you right. know, 50 yards and visit, you know, thing. Admission is whatever, whatever. But straight artwork on a wall, that's a mural. It's not a sign, in my opinion. But just throwing it out there. Okay. There's no, excuse me, there's no writing on the other mural either, is there? On the roof? Yes. The, the, in my PowerPoint, I Yeah, you have to come up. Barbara, you have yeah, to come we up. Have, I'm come sorry. Up. Come up. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, that PowerPoint I gave you, it does show the Ruth Blay mural at the beginning. I, they, they had applied for, um, in their application, they indicated the size of the signs with the writing um, and then the image of Ruth Blay as separate signs. But Ruth Blay was still considered a sign because there's nothing else we can call it. Yeah, well, and that's my understanding yeah. is that there is some talk about having a um, ordinance related to murals, but yeah. uh, it ha there hasn't one. happened this yet. This is an ongoing goal for Yeah. 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 So. so if it weren't for the mural, you wouldn't be here because the three times two sign is permitted. Huh. I, I appreciate your... your uh, Acknowledgement that it is the the ordinance that's the hardship on this. <clears throat> I don't. You can't use. You can't show that. I'm. I. Do you know what the name is of the PowerPoint? There's a lot on here. Oh, it it says um, 
own a judge stains mural. It doesn't PowerPoint. Look like, it doesn't look like it's. Uh, oh, there she is. Okay. Give me one second to pull it up. See how we consider this in the same vein as so, walking down Sirius Street and seeing Shark Tooth? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Ward, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. this is just shows the Ruth Blay mural. And one thing we were aware of we could see is that particularly when there was snow on the ground, you could tell people were stomping over the bushes to read it. And we just felt that we didn't want the, the right driveway, there. <laughs> private driveway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually happy there's no writing on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it makes sense. Yeah, we guy. wanted it with no writing. Right. So. It makes it artwork. <laughs> and it would seem that the conditions that led to the approval of the roof lay, the hardship uh, would be similar to the current application. Yes. Perhaps. Um, My concern is a little bit different from yours. Is once we approve a sign of that size, the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire is the current property owner. They won't be the property owner forever because forever is a really, really long time. And at some point, when they're, you know, the, the variance stays with the property, and at some point, uh, it may not be public artwork. It may be a giant molar advertising a dental shop or a political slogan uh, in support of some uh, political campaign or something else, whoever else owns the building. And I think that puts a completely different character on what we're being asked to approve. I think Ms. Casella has an answer. Yeah, so just as a reminder, what's presented is what you're approving. Um, if the content, or I'm, I'm sorry, if, if the design were to change, that would need to come before this board. So. You know the the mock-up that's why we we asked for the mock-up so that you could see generally what it's going to be um i did put a um possible stipulation in the uh, memo that. Mm -hmm. so that you know it should the costume change should the general um small details change um you'd be allowed to do that um but what is presented is what you would be approving uh, okay. they couldn't change that without coming back before the board Good. Um, that's fine. I'd like to take a shot at this. Please. So I would make a motion to approve the to approve the uh, variance application uh, with a stipulation that the sign would be a artistic image only of uh, Ona Judge uh, and would not uh, be altered uh, for any other purpose. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Mantle, thank you. Please, Mr. Rossi. I think the variance, uh, taking the first two criteria, not contrary to the public interest and the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Uh, the ordinance actually in this uh, zone allows for, uh, is, by, uh, is permitted use of, uh, for a museum. And in essence, what the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire is doing is creating a free to the public uh, art display that I would consider to be akin to an open access museum for anyone to uh, to see. And uh, I would say that is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Substantial justice is done. Uh, there's, a, there's no loss to the public. Uh, you can make a very compelling case that uh, this is an enrichment for the public and so there's no gain uh, to be had by the owners of the property that is outweighed by a loss to the public. The values of the surrounding properties uh, would not be diminished. I think it's good that there's been discussion with uh, the abutter. Uh, there seems to be no objection uh, to uh, the mural and uh, the abutter would be the, in a position to make an objection if they thought that there was an impact on their property values. Uh, I take the absence of any public comment of that nature to be support for uh, the idea that it will not have a negative impact on the surrounding property. When it comes to the hardship of the property, I think the special condition of the property is that uh, it does contain this one brick wall uh, that was 
place there at some time in, in history, uh, and that the wall needs to be preserved by applying a coat of paint anyway, and therefore uh, making an artistic use of it is uh, very consistent, and it is a unique aspect of this property that it needs to have paint on the wall in order to preserve it. So I think that is the special condition that justifies uh, the use uh, in this manner. And that is it. That's my motion. Thank you. Does the second have anything to add? Um, Mr. Rossi stated quite clearly. I'm glad you added the stipulation. Um, it, concentrating on a mural is not a sign. I didn't realize somebody could change the mural. <laughs> right. Uh, but what you just said in regards to the brick, uh, I'm not going to add a stipulation. I would advise you, since you're going to be doing this and you're going to find a lot of paint on brick experts in this town especially, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, whatever you do with it, make sure that you, once the mural is completed, that you apply something on top of it so that it can be easily cleaned when it's vandalized. Um, just like Mr. Rossi anticipated somebody changing it, I'm anticipating somebody not liking it. Um, but I will support the motion wholeheartedly. I guess I would just add, uh, in relation to this uh, brick wall, it is interesting and unique, the history of the property, and uh, because of the fire, that uh, changed uh, that whole area, and uh, it leads to these u unique conditions that we've arrived at that makes this an ideal uh, wall for a mural. I would say I'm also in favor of this um I thought the motion was very well put in terms of the actual museum. That's Thank that you. was yes. And also we know that this is an ongoing <coughs> interest of the city. This is an ongoing project and I think it's very much within the spirit of the ordinance. So does anyone have anything to add? Okay. Then a yes vote means that we will get a new piece of art in town. So, Mr. Mantle. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Mr. Matson. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay. That's it. Madam Chairman. Yes. What are you going to say? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.